All right, so let's take a look at the next one here. Um, here is one to work on. Let's start with triple. So if I uh, nano triple one dot ASM. All right, so what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to make a program that will take in numbers like one, two, or three and triple them. Just a simple program. So I start here and I um, have, I'm planned to put some output. So I'm doing a read, which is EAX3, and then I'm going to do a write. And so if I go down here, I've defined a um, buffer in and a buffer out. And I've given it just a few spaces and then a carriage return line feed and a length. And so it just creates some room, and I'm planning to write on here from the input and write on here for the output. So I'm just this part, part where I print is just the same thing we've done before. The only two new things are reading some, something and trying to do math on it. So here it reads something, and so we have parameters here. Let's find out about the read syscall, uh, which I don't have there, but let's bring it back. It's in probably 100. There is a link to it. Um, all right. Here's, oh, you saw it here. Sysread is the same thing. And here's the parameters. Oh, right there. E, B, C, D. Good. So in, in let me shrink this a little bit to make it fit or make the screen a little wider for a moment. OK, good. So. When we write, it's EAX contains a 4, EBX contains a integer, which is the number of bytes to write, ECX contains a pointer to the, um, the string you're going to write, and this has the size. Oh, oh, excuse me. This is the length of bytes to write. This is the pointer, the number of the device to write to. And so um, that's sys write, good. All right, so sys write, you write to one. One is standard out, and I think zero is standard in. So that's what's going on. So I'll expect a zero in EBX, a pointer to the string in ECX, and the number of bytes in EDX. So that'll be three. Um, this is read for one. And here's, huh, I'm surprised it's still one. Maybe a standard in might be one. Let me just look this up because I'm confused. Um, standard in, standard out numbers. Right, zero is standard in and one is standard out. Hmm. So standard input is the keyboard, so reading should really use an input of zero. Hmm. I think that's wrong. And apparently my program worked even though it's wrong. Anyway, so three is read. That's the device number. Here's the buffer to re put it in, and here's the number of bytes to read. So it'll read. Run it, run it and see it. What's that? Run it and see it. Run it and see. I know. I'm going to run it both ways. Let's first deal with that problem. So let me. So this triple has already been compiled here. So if I run triple one and put in like a one, it, print, it prints out a question mark. Now let's try fixing that problem which I did not notice before, triple one dot AS, I think that should be a zero. And I happen to know it works this way, just from experience, but I think that really should be a zero. See, there's probably, apparently some part of this thing is compensating for my mistake there. Triple one. All right, now I load it, or link it. Triple one. Now I run it, put in a one, and again, I got to, all right, the output is not right, but it's taking it either way. Now we're going to see, all right, so let's look at this one. It doesn't work very well, but here's the point. It reads in something, and then it's going to try and triple it. So what it's going to do is it's going to take the buffer and move it into AL, which is an 8-bit register, and then it's going to shift that left to double it, and then it's going to add it again, trying to get to three times. And then it's going to move that into buffer out, and print buffer out. And there's a lot of problems with this program. So um, when you want to debug a program, you could use a debugger, but I'm here I'm showing you the ancient technique, which is used by a lot of coders, and a bunch of people hate you when you do this, and just putting print statements everywhere. You can do it in assembler, just like every other language. This is the classic way to solve a problem. So let's look at triple two. But I got to spell it better than that. All right. So this one, what I did was I put find a function called print cs, which will print um, anything you put 
in addition, you have prints, uh, uh, just a uh, thing called print CS, which is going to have D here for diagnostic. You can um, print this stuff if you want to. And so um, if I go up here, it'll find a function called print C. This will push EAX. It will um, move the location CS plus 5 into here. So it will um, not print right from the start. It's going to leave that D colon there. And um, I hate to link the print CS. It's going to put a like in CS plus 5. So somewhere over here, it's going to put that one byte, and then it's going to print it by just making the same print call. So we now have a function called print underscore C, which will print anything we want. That's the idea. And so now, to try to diagnose what the problem with this is, I'm going to print whatever came in as soon as it got into AL. And then I'm going to shift it left and print again, and add it and print it again, hoping that this will make it possible for me to figure out what's wrong with the program. So let's get rid of this and run triple two. I already compiled this one. So if you give it, oh, got to do dot slash. All right, now if I give it a one, okay, it shows I had a one. Then when I doubled it, it turned into B. Then when I tried to triple it, it turned into something unprintable. So this is beginning to give me a clue. And of course, the problem is when I put in a one, it did not read that as an integer. It read it as the character one. So if you go to your ASCII table, the character 1 is here. It is 31. So when you double it, it turns into 62 in base 10. And 62 is greater than, so uh, wait, okay, 31 in hex. So you double it, it turns into 62 in hex, which is a B. That's why. So I have to convert it from ASCII back to a number. That's what's wrong. So. I think that's what triple three does. The first problem to fix. All right. So here's an improved version of it. What I did was I left this at one. I didn't think it mattered. Anyway, it should have. That should be zero, but it doesn't matter. So now I read it in. It's a buffer. It's an ASCII value. So I put it in B left, and then I subtract thirty. That works because this is the great thing about it. Notice thirty is zero. Thirty-one is one. Thirty-two is two. So all you have to do is subtract thirty hexadecimal to go from an ASCII number, an ASCII digit, to the real number. So I take the number, I subtract 30, now it's an integer value. Now I um, move buff in to A left and call print C. This is where I print the inputting number, that's diagnostic. That's going to print the ASCII character you read in. Now I move B left to C left, where I'm going to do the calculation. And I shift left, B left once. The another problem with the previous one is I doubled it and then added it again. So I was going to end up with four times the original number. That was another bug. So instead, I have to save the original number, double it, and then add the original number in one more time to get to three. And now the answer is in B left. Now I have to add 30 to B left to turn it back into a digit because it's just an integer at this point. And now I can print that. So that's the idea. And uh, I think this one works better. Well, it still has some bugs in it. Um, that's triple three. So now if I give it a one, see, it does have a three. It doesn't print out the right answer at the bottom. Something went wrong with that. But in my diagnostic printing, I do see the number. And it's actually tripling it, because if I put it in a two, it'll work. And if I put it in a three, it'll work. But of course, it's a very limited program. If I put in a four, it's going to do something weird, because it only handled one digit. So it can't handle 12. And that's going to have strange results. So this is a very lousy program, but it's a little better now than it was. All right. And so, yeah, that's um, all right. And there are some challenges here to move from there and figure out how to take a decimal number, convert it into hex, and so on. Now you can handle, now you can extract decimal values from digits and do math on them and put them back in. There are various ways to do it. All right, so that's it for 104. Let me stop this recording.